Let's look at something called the vector product. Okay, so how about we get some kind of perspective here. If you remember, we've done something called the scalar product. Uh, other textbooks might call it the dot product. And remember, this was if you've got two vectors A and B, okay, and you multiply vectors. You're multiplying two vectors. And the scalar product was if you multiply these two vectors, you get a scalar. Okay? You multiply A dot B, and remember you got A, B, cos, theta. So you got a scalar out. This was a scalar. It was a number. Minus 10, 25. It's, this is no longer a vector. It's a scalar. And where did we use it? We used it for work. This was one application. Work was F dot dr. If you had a force and some, with some magnitude and direction, and the displacement was in a, in a certain direction, dr, and we had a th an angle there, then the work done was F dot dr, which is the magnitude of F times the magnitude of the displacement times the cos of the angle. And we saw that if it was 90 degrees, uh, that force did no work. If it was, if the angle was zero degrees, then it, it had a maximum amount of work that it could do. But it was a scalar. Now, we want to look at something called the vector product, also called the cross product. And again, if you've got A and B, um, you go like this. A cross B is, basically, it is A, B, sine theta but then and this is this the the textbook doesn't put this in um, as far as I can tell um, so just take what you want from it but it's but the the vector product you end up with a vector a scalar product you end up with a scalar a vector product you end up with a vector so that means you need both a magnitude this is your magnitude and you need some kind of vector. I don't even know what to call it because I don't want to get you confused. But you have this vector. Let's call it C. And so you've got a mag magnitude and a direction. Normally this is, in a, is a unit vector. Okay? Um, but I don't want to go beyond the textbook. So the point that I'm trying to make is that when you multiply, when you carry out the vector product of two vectors, you're going to get a, have a magnitude, which is a b sine of that angle, times a unit vector that is perpendicular to these two vectors. Okay? It's perpendicular. This guy is perpendicular to a and b. So you've got a magnitude and a direction. Okay, and the idea is where are we? Where do we apply it? Well, the one example is if you've got torque. It is equal to remember if you've got an object, and you've got a, a, a tangential force there. Or actually, let me let me rather say you've got a force acting in any direction. And there's the axis of rotation. And you've got a a radius there. Okay. Now your force is a vector and your r actually is a vector. Okay? And there's some there's some angle between these. Remember, uh, if you've got there's your r vector and there's your f vector, and there's your angle. Then tau is your your um, your torque is a vector. And so you're going to have r cross F. Okay? And so you're going to multiply these two uh, vectors together and you're going to get a vector out. Because remember, torque is a vector. It has both a magnitude and a direction. So the magnitude of this guy, the magnitude is going to be R, the magnitude of R, times the magnitude of the force, 
times the sine of the angle between them. That is the magnitude. Okay? Let's look at how the textbook presents us quickly. Okay, so torque, um, torque is a vector and it has a direction. Um, so remember uh, force times your perpendicular distance or your distance times your perpendicular force is equal to torque. Okay, so here we go. There's R and F. R cross F gives you your torque. Okay. And the direction is perpendicular to the plane of those two vectors. Okay, that's enough for now. I'll focus a little bit more on the direction and the right-hand rule in the next one.